So we're gonna talk about wheels. Um, these are the wheels that came with the model and they look pretty nice. You know, they're made by Dubro, they're plastic. You can paint all this silver with some black inserts and it turns out to be a nice wheel, but it's not quite what I want for something of this caliber. That we're putting a lot of time, a lot of money into this airplane. We need something that's a little bit better. Now I have a set of Robard. These are five and a half. And you can tell when they're on the airplane, the five and a half are just really, they're too small. They just don't look proportional. And the six inch is okay, but in all the photos, and I'll show a photo here, this wheel has a lot of meat around it and it's a bigger wheel. We need to fill in this space between here and there to make this right. So I have some of these uh, Sullivan, these are the light wheels that they sell, but I like the spokes on these. So if you put these on, let's see, let's go. So you can tell that's a nice looking wheel. This is a seven inch wheel and the center part's okay, but you know, it's not really scaled or detailed. It's just not for this model. And I could go in here and if I'll show a picture of the real wheel, you can see that the wheel has little lines in it. And I could actually fill these holes in and put the little lines and then put some bolt and use these little bolt holes and, you know, and make a scale wheel. But I really, you know, it's a lot of work. So looking at that wheel, the seven inches is what I need. Now the spoke wheel from Robart, I looked it up and they don't make it up past a six inch. So it wouldn't be no more than that. I like the seven inch cause it fills this gap up. And on the real photo, uh, the real photos of this aircraft, uh, it's a beefier wheel. So I'm gonna make a wheel and I'm gonna use some of these wheels and I've already made one up. And also the real airplane had a spoked wheel. Um, so this is kind of a, um, it is a scale wheel. So there we go. That's the wheel I'm going to use. Um, I use the hub from Robard and just inserted it in the other wheel. And that's the hub for the other wheel that I took out. So I've done that and I think it's going to look really nice. It's a nice beefy wheel. It took the the space from here to there. It just looks better. I like the wheel. It looks really good on the model. And so that's the wheel I'm going to choose to go with. And also on the back side, if you look, let's see if I can put something under it. Uh, if you look at the back side, it's got a come up, it's almost going to look like a brake drum that sticks out, which when you look at it from the other direction, it looks quite nice actually. And all I did was take the, that's just that rim flipped over and pushed in there and so the two rims are now touching each other and that's how I came up with that. So kind of have to think outside of the box on stuff like this. Um, there's not a manufacturer that makes the correct wheel for this aircraft so this is something I've come up with and um, I think it's going to be quite nice. Do a little bit of a walk around with this wheel so you can kind of see the style of it. I really like this wheel. This is what I was talking about the other side. It looks like it's got a brake drum on there. So I think that's going to turn out quite nice and look very scale. And also I have found some scale photos of the real plane that have a spoked wheel. And so let's come back here. Look at that. I think the wheel looks great on there. So these are the sorts of things that keep me up at night is trying to figure out how to make um, this engine mount rigid without adding a ton of weight. So um, this is what I've came up with. Um, it's almost like a glow engine mount. And I bought one out, if you look right here, you know, you got your flat rail with your contoured up. So they've worked really good over the years. It's just, this one's a lot bigger. So um, I think it's gonna work great. I thought about cutting holes in there to lighten it, but for the material you're gonna cut out, you're gonna, you know, I don't wanna weaken it. I like the way it is. I don't think it's gonna add enough weight to worry with. And then the, how I got that was I made a template of what I needed and then glued it to the top of the blue uh, ply board. And um, so I could cut my other ply board out 
without having to cut, go back, cut, go back. I made all my cuts and lines on this before I cut that. So you can tell um, it turned out quite nice. I'm pretty happy with this. It's made this engine mount very, very rigid. So today's project is to put some triangle stock in these corners. I'm gonna show you my boo-boo. If you look right there, I miss, I miss measured the hole. Um, I forgot that one of these arms that come out from the fuselage is longer than the other. So I mismeasured that. So I'm gonna to have to fill that in and fix that. Um, but to get it straight, I had to do some creative carving. So I was tired, I should have stopped. But yeah, I messed that up. Oh well. You can see that, but you see that little piece of sliver? I'm just cutting enough piece off of the, the triangle so when I go down in to fit it, the little glue that has seeped out, it'll give it a little place to, um, for it to sit, fit flush like this piece. So uh, that's just a little trick. Plus, I'm going to put enough epoxy in there to fill that little gap up to just make it even stronger. But just take a little sliver off of the back of that triangle and it'll go in there and fit perfectly. So all of my triangle stock has now been cut and fitted and glued in. You can tell this piece here, this is some creative um, angling and bracing to get that piece to stay where it needs to be while the glue sets. I do have one more piece up here that goes on the back. So the engine mount is complete. I've got everything glued in, secured up. Everything is where I want it. It's very strong. Shouldn't have any problems. I've added some uh, carbon fiber just to brace up this little piece in the front just because I felt with the torque of the motor, it needed something else there. You can tell I've got all my triangle stock is in. So I'm very happy with everything. And there it is with the motor mounted. Everything came out quite nice. Pretty happy with everything. Very secure, that's for sure. So there is the first time the cow's been on. And I've used some temporary screws just to hold it on. I am going to be gluing all of this on permanently. But you can kind of see that everything is starting to line up quite nicely. Everything looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, everybody. This is the first time I've been able to actually tape on the top of the cowl. And as you can tell, it looks pretty good. Very little issues. I have a little gap right here and then if you come across to the other side you can tell I have a gap here. So there's something just a little bit off on this but um, I'm pretty sure I can get that out. It's very very I mean just with tape um, it's very close and whoever cut these this cow out um, these lines are really straight and um, they did a really good job, so they get an A-plus for that. That had to be somebody, probably the second-hand owner did this part. And you tell this hole is nice and the right way. It looks good. We're going to have to add some material because whoever cut this one, well, I kind of got it off. So that'll be in the Bondo and um, fiberglassing stage. But right now, you guys are getting to see it with me. That's the first time I've had the top lid on to see where we're gonna be at. I'm pretty happy. Now I realize this video is probably gonna be kind of boring to some people because it had to do with the engine mount. But I have everything back together. You notice I have the ropes and pulleys back up. And the reason I have that is when I did the engine mount, the engine mount came out just a little bit, changed just a little bit. So that changed the incident on the wing. So I had to go back and break two of the wooden dowels out and change the incident on the wings to match the uh, correct um, squareness of the engine. So I'm setting it up now, the pulleys, it's all square. I'm very happy with it. Um, I've got my dihedral right, everything looks good. So I'm at the end of the day and I have to wait 24 hours for the glue to set. So I'm done. So what do you do when you're done with this project and you still have the rest of the day? Well, it's always good to have a second project. So this is my comp bar for MIG-15. And so what I'm fixing to do is work on the canopies. Uh, they need to be uh, fitted 
and um, glued in and the little dials need to be drilled. So that's what we're going to finish up today with. So I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying this build. Um, like I said, I know for some people this is going to be a little bit boring, but you know, uh, that's part of the build process. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video. Pretty much the aerial hard part is done. Uh, the engine mount is completed. The wings are done. Um, it's really down to fit and finish items. Um, so um, couldn't be happier. The hard part's done. We still got to worry about the windshield. In the next couple of videos, we'll be talking about lights. I've got a whole lighting kit for this aircraft. So we have a whole lot to learn and a lot to do. So stay tuned, and I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks so much for watching.